You are now listening to the Hot Take Hot Box. Welcome to the Shoulder Strikes MMA Podcast. You are now listening to the Hot Take Hot Box. Welcome to the Shoulder Strikes MMA Podcast. You are now listening to the Hot Take Hot Box. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Shoulder Strikes MMA Podcast, fresh off of a UFC 289 spectacle. But ladies and gentlemen, that is not the only thing we have to talk about. The combat sports world was on absolute fire, and the filth that just seems to reside in this sport was all over the place. We had John Gotti not <laughs> not abiding by the referee's rules and starting an absolute chaos brawl in the middle of an exhibition bout that I didn't know was happening. And then we have some more, you know, Tiafimo retiring at the age of 25, Amanda Nunes retiring <laughs> at the age of 35. My name is Matt McSweeney. I am joined by Ty Capone. This is the Shoulder Strikes MMA podcast brought to you by the Hot Take Hot Box. Ty, how are you feeling today? Pretty fired up. I think I might have to retire as well. There's so many, so many I retirements. I might join them. We might retire this a bunch of <laughs> A bunch of fighters getting cut. Uh, Braxton Smith, RIP. I know. It was a long two months that he had. Um, I didn't even know that could happen, but they got yeah, rid of him. There's, yeah, let's be honest. There's a bunch. There's a lot. Uh, Maria Oliveira on the on the on the eve of not telling anybody that she was uh, instead of training for a fight, she was uh, on a t- reality TV show that she did not even win. Yeah, that's why I hope um, you all follow me on Twitter. I took that off the card immediately, ladies and gentlemen, when I saw that tweet. I can confirm. I can confirm that. Um, also, would have been nice to know Diana Belbita had a broken foot coming in the fight, so. You know, I, I don't know if we're really screening these athletes. Uh, I feel like Dana's just throwing fights together, and then uh, on fight night, he's like, all right, let's see who shows up. It seems like it's a real wild, wild west. That's why I do <laughs> tell you people all the time, do not bet these sport, this sport. Do not bet these fights. Betting yeah. fighting is a joke. It, really, it truly is. You never know what version of who or what's going to show up. You know, th- then this guy's got, you know, some disease you've never heard of, and he is... <laughs> They had to cut part of his bowels out. You're like, oh, okay. But he still fought. He lost. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So I just lost my fucking money betting some guy who was like fighting for his life before he even got in the octagon. But yeah. Typical. Uh, it, it's been, it was a rough weekend. But first, we are going to get into the UFC card from this weekend. Amanda Nunes, Irene Aldana. It seems like Irene Aldana was uh, this... She she put up a good fight, I will say, for the, from the from the standpoint that she didn't die, you know, she lasted the full twenty five. She did not get finished, but Amanda Nunes was in the driver's seat this entire time, and it didn't seem like. I guess uh, the the reason I am um, I guess upset a little bit is that uh, she didn't really implement the wrestling the way I thought she was going to. She was taking her down and then letting her back up. And I don't know. I just didn't understand a lot of what Amanda was doing, but I never really understand it. She was just dominating wherever she wanted to. And I think if she really pushed the grappling, she would have probably got the finish. But uh, instead, she goes 25 minutes and then retires in the octagon after cutting her gloves off. And uh, in only Amanda Nunes fashion, it was the, uh, you know, the weirdest and ugliest uh, retirement uh, speech and everything that we could imagine. She just started naming <laughs> Anderson Silva and just naming that different people. Bad. It's Listen, yeah. she her legacy is cemented, but she will always be very, very much one of the not. I wouldn't say unlikable, but it just seems like I, I just don't. I never really cared, man. She was always so good. It just kind of that mighty mouse factor where I just don't care. Yeah, everybody, everybody talks about how nice mighty mouse was. Dana White loves Amanda Nunes, and he, he doesn't. You know, there's there's certain athletes that he that he loves, like his own children. He's one of them. Uh, and a lot of people in general, you know, say good things about her. But I, you know, which is which is fine. I, I don't know her personally. I never will. But uh, like you said, I just I never really cared too much. You know, there's sometimes she put on lackluster performances. That was more so at the beginning of her career. Uh, but she, yeah, she, I mean, she's probably one of the probably the best woman ever. I, I think that should be not not even really up for debate. The other two that you could put up there, she beat right. She's three and zero against Valentina. Yep. And uh, and Cyborg. Uh, she also beat. Um, two and zero against Valentina. Two and zero against her, but one and zero against against. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I know what you meant. My bad. Uh, also, she beat um. I, now I can't think of her name. She was the best woman ever. Joe Rogan said she could beat Floyd Mayweather. Oh, Felicia uh, Spencer, Ronda Rousey. No. Oh, okay, my bad. 
Felicia Spencer as well. Ronda Rousey. She was. She was. An, can you believe that she was an underdog against Ronda Rousey that night? I can I wish I could just go back in the time. And yeah, man. Absolutely. Just. I, I can't believe that was a thing. I would love to. I probably had Ronda Rousey that night. I probably had a uh, legacy bet on that. <laughs> Ronda sub. Yeah, I think I might have as well. Uh, but just looking at her overall career, I you know I think I see some people saying she's not just the woman's goat, but the goat. Go and no. I, I, I have a, I have a bit of an issue with that. Um, I think you know I have a bunch of issues with that. But going sixteen and two in the UFC, man, uh, pretty much you know not m- most of a, most of the wins by finish. Um, I mean, taking care of C- Cyborg in one minute, taking care of Ronda Rousey in one minute, um, taking care of Megan Anderson in one minute. You know, three of the best fighters ever, right? So no, but I think at the end of her career, she did run into some problems with just no one to fight, man. I mean, th- you know. Yeah. Um, she said, she said she wouldn't have retired if this was Juliana Pena. She said she wanted to retire with somebody that she had never fought before. Uh, I guess she did know the whole time she said she knew she was going to retire. I think that happens. I think that's why we didn't see a finish. <clears throat> I guess, um, it wasn't just about complacency. She, I don't think she was complacent, but she was just focused on getting the win. Um, and, and winning, you know, kind of decisively. I don't think she really, uh, cared for a finish. She's done everything she had to do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, two wins ended her career with, with without getting a finish in either one. I think, you know, we have seen her uh her skills kind of deteriorate deteriorate slowly, a little you know, a little bit. She's thirty five, so I don't think there's really anything left for her. I mean, maybe if she wants to come back in a couple of years if Blanchfield's running shit or, you know, Valentina's still hanging around. She Valentina's getting old too, so I mean we're gonna start seeing some of these uh top women uh start to go away, like the you know how a couple of years ago it was Amanda, it was Valentina. It was Rose. It was Joanna. Yeah, they're all going to be gone, you know, before we even know, which is honestly fucking crazy. But uh, that's how the sport is, man. You know, time waits for no man or woman. So um, father and mother time are undefeated. But yeah, I mean, you know, I, I the biggest joke was uh, the the camera showing Juliana Pena screaming ringside, "You're not Anderson Silva," which she's not wrong, but <laughs> yeah, um, but just shut up, just shut up, and you know, talking about how you know. She was on Ariel Ariel's show, and you know she basically said Amanda's dead to me. Like she she said Amanda took her moment. I'm like, you're not even on the fight card. What are you talking about? That you took your her moment. moment because you dropped out of the fight, man. Like that. Let's not forget that. Like this fight was supposed to be you. Yeah, you're right, but you also didn't show up. So you showed up to watch the fight. You were supposed to yeah, fight. Yeah, you showed her. up as a you spectator. Didn't get in the octagon, like. You, uh, she just, I, in any way, if you tried to, she's one of those people like you try to like her, try to root for her, and then she does shit like that, and you're like, oh man, like. She tries to do like a Colby Covington shtick, and it's so, it's so bad, and it's not funny. She told Ariel that she wakes up every morning, looks inside the, looks at the mirror, and calls herself champion. That is just so sad. So pathetic. Like. And also, and not, now probably was, not real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> probably not Let's true at all. That. You know what I mean? It's the best moment, bullshit. the best moment of the retirement uh, ceremony, I think, was uh, her and Nina's yeah, daughter getting in there and running around. I thought that was kind of, kind no, of that cool. was like, cool. she's absolutely ador- adorable, and she was just running around. Amanda was running around the ring with a beer, and then it was just all dump- getting dumped out. I was kind of, it was very confusing for sure. And I think it was like it kind of just happened. And the reason it kind of just happened as it is, it's because that's Dana's. Pretty much his favorite, one of his favorite per- people ever. I mean, you know, think of all the things that she has done um, in the UFC. You know, just in general. Uh, I mean, her career, even before the UFC, her career um, in Strike Force. I mean, her, she lost her first debut, her first, um, first debut, her first MMA fight ever as a pro. And then she, you know, she has some good regional scenes, regional scene wins. Vanessa Porto, Julia Budd. Um, she lost her Strike Force, I think, debut, if I remember correctly. So she, she honestly came a long way from the Cats and Gano. Um, Alexis Davis L's that she took. Uh, one of her first wins after that Kat Zingano win in the UFC was Valentina. Um, again, both Valentina fights were closed, but she got the win in both. And that's really all, all you can say. I used to hate on her a lot. I was a big cyborg, cyborg guy. And then when she absolutely decimated her within, you know, yeah. quicker than she decimated R- Ronda Rousey, I was like, well, I think this is, this, this is a, a closed discussion, if you will. Well, it's when she like took that next step from being just like a the, a good like one of the best fighters today to being like you you can't deny she's one of the best of all time, if not the best. Like she, 
she had beat everybody uh, of big name that you put in front of her towards yeah. the end of her career. You know, like you said, she had her slip ups for sure. But I mean, I, like you said, you talked about how Dana White loves her, and hey, you're right because it's it's for probably good reason. She went from, or I'm sorry, he went from Ronda Rousey, who kind of just birthed the women's division and gained all these new eyes onto women's fighting and mixed martial arts, and then Amanda kind of took the torch and ran with it. Like right, like I mean, yeah. she has been. Holding that torch and, and running with it since what the last almost it, it's how long Ten years? Was that? I mean, the last time her well, and Ronda fought was what well, 16, 17? What, six, yeah, yeah, yeah. At the very 2016 was definitely, yeah, 2016 was like the I feel like that year sticks out as like the Ronda McGregor, yeah, the end, um, the end of the old era and the pushing into that sort yeah. of this new one that Amanda Nunes yeah. was a big part of. I mean, yeah, December 30th of 2016, so yeah. Wow, I didn't even realize it was the very end of 2016. So yeah, yeah like you said, pretty much beginning 2017. Uh, you know, obviously the Eagles won in 2017. 2017 was a great year. Oh, 2017 great year was my favorite year um, in 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 history of living for some reason. I don't know. I, I always look back at some of my f- favorite screenshots in my count in my camera roll are from 2017. Uh, just remembering sports, like you know the Golden State, Cleveland, 2016, 2017, back and forth. Um, rivalry and just just overall sports 2017 i think was uh one of my favorite years but anyway back to this fight do you think she should have gotten her out of there yeah absolutely yeah i mean also, I, I don't think the, that I right think the hand was the, yo my god yeah she kind of uh joined in the pain first in round ass. yeah because she had no respect like, for her and then the, the one problem i do have with the renee in this fight she just she didn't go for it at all no. she didn't go for it at all um and then she put out some like you know stupid not stupid maybe i shouldn't say but like terrible like post fight um like statement everyone statement. statements after they lose <laughs> yeah i'll be back for sure 100 percent. i just had a mental blockage i'm like well you're 35 you know if you're having mental blockage i get it it's your, it's your first title fight you know but um you, that, that can't be happening she hit her with a clean right hand man in the first round and i don't think it hurt amanda but it definitely you know the follow-up shot could have and she just didn't even didn't even try and that's that's what really upsets me about it. And it's sad to see her getting, you know, a lot of hate, but um, deservedly so, I guess. Deser- deservedly so, indeed. But what are you going to do, man? I, I, Amanda Nunes has always been that kind of person. Just you either love her or you absolutely hate her. And I, I, I've heard, I mean, people were, I was talking to were just like kind of happy that she retired because they don't like. They think her fights are. I mean, some of her fights are absolutely boring, and she really hasn't had good matchups. But I can't imagine it's going to get much better after this in, the, in that thirty-five division. With like we said, Juliana Pena being at the at the top now, Raquel Pennington, yeah, even, Holly Holm. I mean, it's really slim pickings there for any sort of. What do you even you know, What do you like, even do there? Well, I mean, we talked about a little bit about Erin Blanchfield kind of throwing her name in that race, sort of to like I don't feel like waiting. She she definitely could be a champion in either one of these divisions, it seems like. She has that kind of skill set. Whether she's that, I mean, no one's going to be as exciting or have that sort of uh, aura around them like Amanda Nunes because I really do believe, even though it hasn't uh, aged the same way, that that win against Amanda Nunes, or I'm sorry, against Ronda Rousey, like that's still shown to this day every time you see her clips is her just beating the absolute breaks off Ronda Rousey for 40 seconds, 47 Had seconds. Had her hands down long. the entire time. Just no Just respect. Res- yeah. Like, and then you saw Ronda like, doing a bunch of like spins and twirls like she's on you know, Disney on ice, and she's asking Herb Dean, like, what happened? She had no idea, and she, uh, that's because an <laughs> a absolute tornado came through the octagon. And, and that's, that's really like the thing that will always be her you know, feather in the cap sort of thing. So whether she comes back or not, I don't know if she will. Uh, I have a feeling she's going to at some point because I just think it, I it, it always seems they like that. Do. Biggest news was that Nina's going to get back in there after she has the kid, which uh, you know we uh, we on this podcast are a big Nina Nunez. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, no, <laughs> we'll I, fade her. I don't know really what they're going to do at 35 though. Back to your original question, uh, Juliana Pena yeah. is going to be there, and then probably I mean, are we going to have to watch a Raquel Pennington? That can't even be the main event. Uh, well, Raquel, it, you know, she's doing the best. Of any going up there, she, like when's the last, she's won what three, four in a row, something like that. She's won four in a row. Like she deserves it as much as that pains me. She to subbed. Say. She subbed Andrade. She beat the rest of the women by decision. 
I said, I said, that was a while ago. It looks like, yeah, okay. Um, you know, she subbed Macy Chat. Like, look if you look at down, if you want to look down the rankings, you'd be like, who can we see? You know, potentially challenge Chelsea Chandler. Uh, do you think she's a uh, prospect to look out for to make a title run? I don't think so. Um, Arena Alexeva, she did, you know, do something pretty um, convincing to Stephanie Egger. Um, that was kind of cool. Tanara Lisboa, I like her a lot. But these chicks are like five fights away, you know? Um, yeah. There's just not really many. There's like 20 fighters in the Bantamweight division. Julia Avila, I mean, you know, when she makes her return, is she going to be something? I mean, she lost to Sajara Eubanks. Uh, Panny Kianzad, Holly Holm. People are talking about Holly Holm and Juliana Pena for the interim belt. And I, I would just, or not interim, for the new belt, I guess. I just want to throw up thinking of that. No. And that's why I think maybe so, you're going to see somebody like that from Aaron Blanchfield or somebody from 25 jump up because there's kind of going to be like a power vacuum now. Like the people yeah. you didn't want to fight at 35 before, you're definitely open to fighting anyone pretty much at that top level because One anyone. Win and you're getting a title shot. Yeah, it's wide like, open. It's absolutely wide open. Anybody can fucking, you can, exp, you know, give a reasoning or tell a story about that, why this person's worthy or that person or this yeah. matchup. It's, it really Manon is. Manon Firo, Aaron Blanchfield, Tyler Santos. Any of them move up, they could probably fight for it. Tracy Cortez, you know, we haven't seen her in a while. Macy Barber, Amanda Hebos. If any of them move up, they could probably be right there. Win one fight, boom, you're in. Like, that's all it'll take, so... I think especially I hope, I somebody like Santos because she's so big, and if she was able yeah. to just have that extra ten pounds, Tatiana. Yeah. Um, I don't know how I don't know how it works with with these women. I don't know if if any of them are uh, cutting a lot of weight or who's cutting more than who. But I would love to see Aaron Blanchfield do it, honestly, just because I kind of want to see what happens at one twenty five with Grasso and Valentina, and and um, you know, there's I, it's a deeper division, and I do want to see Blanchfield fight everybody. I mean, honestly. She probably could, and if it was up to her, she still she would be the youngest women's champion if she won the yeah. belt relatively soon, I believe. Um, she she's what twenty three, twenty four. She can hold two belts at once. That's she's not at an age where she has to, you know, cut a bunch of weight or whatnot. I, I, this could be a a bit of a dream scenario or a pipe dream. Yeah, for I, sure. I don't know. I could see. I mean, Valentina's on her way out. I see as Alexa Grasso is a huge, uh, like. I don't know. I, I think Blanchfield has a huge advantage over her in the wrestling game. Like, he has that advantage over everybody. Yeah. You know, and she's improving her striking. Like, uh, I don't see anybody. Want, I don't see anybody at 135 giving her a, a challenge at all. 125, you know, sure, a few people, but I think this is this is her time to shine. The ne- her next fight, whatever. Does she, does she have one? I don't, I don't really know if she does. Aaron Blanchfield is supposed to fight some. Or no. No, maybe, maybe she doesn't. I guess it's just. I guess. I guess we'll see what Dana thinks about her and Pena at 135. I'm sure he would like that. I mean, yeah. but I don't know. If like, I feel like he would probably go to one of the other Pennington. Names. Yeah, he would give it, or Holm even because he loves yeah. a, a Holly oh, Holm. I just Christ. think they she's he's going so to need to see Jones. more from uh, an Aaron Blanchfield before she he she gets a title shot jumping up. She probably would yeah. have to win that 25 first before she would go on to do something like that. So, I. Uh, Man, I really you, you don't know like Aaron Blanchfield's awesome though. You'll never hear me say a bad thing about her. I I believe that she could absolutely pull that off and make it look much easier than it should. I just yeah. uh, the actual the, the first what, legit what's actually going to happen though, double is, champ. Yeah, that would yeah, well that's an argument to be had. But uh, <laughs> shout out to DC. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, or women's anyway. Women's, yeah, no, for sure. I mean, because the forty-five division, that, that belt's just going to go disappear now. There's not. It's all be done, a right? No, no more, no, no more, no more. Dumont, Chelsea Chandler, Aileen Perez, Danielle Wolf. No more Danielle Wolf at one forty-five. Zara Dos Santos, your girl. Um, Zara Farron. Yeah. Guess we won't have to see her anymore. That's sad. Man, maybe not though. Maybe they can all go to PFL <laughs> and strengthen one of those divisions somewhere. Because there is some good. <laughs> there is some good, like you know, Larissa Pacheco's out there who fight at fifty-five, but like. <laughs> There are some yeah. good women's fighters at the upper weight classes. It's just, you know. Macy Chasson, kind of, hot take, beats Ma- Macy Chasson. Kayla Harrison. All right, come on, man. <laughs> come on. We can't be doing that. Uh, let's, uh, we, you know what, though? Ah, congratulations to Amanda Nunes, but uh, I don't. I really, I, I, I shudder at the thought of Juliana Pena and Raquel uh, Pennington being on like a, <laughs> maybe they somehow main make event. a main event uh, of some card or, because not only, it, it's just who cares, man? And and that's the, the be fight so would be boring. so boring. That's the thing. Like, all right, I think we spent enough time. I, I could ramble on about this all day. Yeah, Charles Oliveira absolutely makes a statement on Saturday night, taking out Benil Daryush with, uh, I believe it started with a head kick, and then he just kind of knocked him down with the hands. 
and then with some vicious ground and pound. You, uh, Ty, were not so sure about Mr. Dar- or uh, Mr. Oliveira taking care of business in this fight. Uh, I was lucky enough to win my pretty much only bet of the night on inside the distance for <laughs> Charles Oliveira. This went exactly how I wanted it to, not exactly how I thought it was going to happen. Yeah, right before they walked out, I had to I had to do something, and I fired two bets: Amanda Nunes inside the distance and Oliveira inside the distance. So at least I was able to kind of walk back my non-bet bet. But I, it, it didn't matter at the end of the day. I got cooked. Um, it started to kind of go how I thought it would with Darius taking him down and um, controlling him for a while. Yeah. But then uh, eventually, man, Oliveira just he you know things go from from fine to awful so quick with him. You know, it, 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 things are going smooth, smooth sailing, and next thing you know, you're sinking and you're drowning. And there's not, there's nothing, nothing you can do when this man has you slightly compromised. Yeah. Nothing. There's just absolutely nothing you can do. <laughs> it's, fu- dude, the head kick that he landed was blocked, fully blocked. But the power, the sheer power of it, still was able to rattle his fucking head. And then the follow up rights just land. I mean, dude, he's just, the, the way he comes at you, Kind of unorthodox, just so quick from different angles with all different shots, head kicks, knees, elbows, punches, wild hooks, straight shots, jabs. He is terrifying. He is a menace. Uh, and he has, what does he have, the most finishes in UFC history, right? He's just, um, man, I, I don't know. I don't know. He's just uh, one of the deadliest finishers in the UFC has ever seen. The MMA has ever seen, truly. I mean, you know, this is a guy that was – Strictly known, not strictly, but pretty much only known for his jujitsu. Um, I forget who tapped him out a while ago, a long time ago, that he was not that. Not, it was just a very bad name to get tapped out by. Looking back on it, I can't. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Was it Nick Lentz? He, he got knee barred by Jim Miller a long, long time ago. I think that was surprising. We saw Paul Felder beat the shit, just make him just quit. On the ground, Anthony Pettis, I think, guillotined him. Um, a couple other guys finished him. And then he just made this just – I don't know what happened to him exactly, but just this absolute revival of his career. And, I mean, he's just – I can only – you can only just marvel when you watch him. He is one of the most exciting fighters ever. You know what you're getting with him. He doesn't fight really that that dumb. It's not like he's kind of just a, a wild brawler, you know, like a maybe like a Chandler or like a, a Gaethje. He's not like that. He's very, very technical, very, very precise. Landed seventy-two percent of his punches on Benil Dariush, who is a solid fighter, but uh, you know, just very chinny. We talked about it. Very, very chinny. And if, you know, if it happened from if Dracar Close rocked him, then what do you think Charles Oliveira could do? And we saw what he could do. We saw what he did. Um, I think both guys look drained on the scales. They both look terrible. Yeah. Um, Oliveira always does. He was trying to smile, and he had like cotton mouth, and it, it looked bad. Oh yeah. But um. <clears throat> He, that's always been happening to him. Regardless, he should. Pro- you think he should probably be next for Islam, right? They should run it back for sure. I, I don't see why. I don't see how you could de- how you could deny it. Dana seemed to be completely uh, enthralled with making that fight. So I'm here for Listen, that. Honestly, I, I, he just gives you the best chance at, at, at winning any fight, any moment, somehow. I've long said that Dustin Poirier is the be- one of the best finishers in the UFC, just because I think when he hurts you. He gets you out of there like he just doesn't stop. Like he just constant offense, constant pressure until he eventually hurts you and gets you out of there. With Charles Oliveira, it's completely a different animal because, like you said though, like when he hurts somebody, you can't clinch, you can't, you can't do anything. You can't back up. You can't put like he has an attack for every part of your game, and that is why he is, as years have gone on, become one of the most if not the most complete fighter, because there's really no facet of his game that you really want to stand with. He knocked out Justin Gaethje on the feet, and many people have fought him and not even hurt him, you know, where they have thrown bombs at him, and he's just kind of maybe stumbled a little bit. He dropped Gaethje clean, and then just, you know, no matter what it is, like you said, he is just an absolute murderer. He is an assassin, and you can't deny it from him to give him this Islam fight. The only other option would be if they were to run that Volkanovski fight again. I keep hearing that, but I don't think they're going to do that. Dana is not yeah. Dana is not exactly the kind of guy that likes to just continually hold up his divisions. And he'll he gave you the chance the one time he came up short. I think Volk's going to have to put a couple behind him before he 
gets back in there with Islam, which I think is, it could definitely happen in the future. I just think running it back now would make no sense. Hey. And when you have somebody like Oliveira who's right there who could step in. He's got a year waiting for him, too, so you never know what happens in that fight. Um, as Volkanovski starts to get a little bit older, right? Could be a could be something to monitor. Um, but yeah, I think this is going to be it for Oliveira. This, I mean, it's sad because Darius was so close; he was right there. But um, I just don't think he's on that level. I also didn't like though how people acted like it was so crazy that uh, Darius was being like touted this much, or that he like Benil Darius de- earned one hundred percent where he was. Like you can't yeah. take that away from him. Some of the, I mean, that win against Gamrot. You know, people try to lower these guys as soon as he fights over. Oh, like, well, Gamrot wasn't that good. It's like, well, no, maybe, maybe Darius was pretty fucking good. good. Yeah, maybe he was yeah. just beating him at every skill that he he really needed, other than pure just explosiveness and athleticism. Darius was one hundred percent worthy of his position of where he was. He just ran into a buzzsaw, man, and you can't hold that against him. But uh, Charles Oliveira is the absolute truth. You cannot hold that, or you cannot take that away from him. And I think he is 100% worthy of the Islam fight. But Yeah, I mean, look what he I mean, are you going to give it to, Ju- to Dustin uh, or Justin? I mean, look what he did to both of them. Yeah. You know, like, so, yeah, I, I, I can't wait for that. I mean, you never know. All he has to do is catch, uh, catch Islam. And we'll, well see. Look, I mean, the first fight, he got dominated badly. But I also just think uh, he wasn't a good ver- We are. We kind of talked about that. It's like this guy, the one that fought on Saturday night, didn't show up to that Islam fight. Like that yeah. wasn't the same guy. Like he, they. I mean, I, I, I am, uh, I agree with the line though that has been sent that like Islam's like minus four hundred, minus three fifty. Like that's what it should be. Like, yeah. Oliveira is a big time underdog. I just, you, you know, I think it's just you have to do it. No one else is worthy of that. And like you said, you name those what five people: Oliveira, Poirier, Gaethje, Daryush, Chandler, Fiziev. Like, uh, who really is worthy more than him? Any you know yeah. of anyone at fifty five, and then like I said, Volk, I'm discounting his uh, resume because he just got a chance. So Mike Malott, guillotine. Uh, listen, this one was a, a tough one for me because I had a little uh, submission sort of uh, bet, but I also had a bigger bet on TKO, and he hurt him a few times on the feet. He just it's an old the old club and sub sort of situation where you run into a tough one. Your Adam Fugit bet on the on the pod did not go. As planned, nope. uh, it just uh, exact it went it played out exactly how you in your nightmare scenario it did go because it was just yeah. Fugit does not like getting hit. Yeah, not athletic. You know, he's he's big, but just you know the movement, the uh, the the quickness of the hands and the just strikes, um, just uh, pr- different level really. I mean, you know, he's older. Um, he's like thirty four, thirty five. So yeah, I mean, Mike Malott, you know the the. The railing collapsing right in front of him, him walking by like nothing even happened. You know, I think that was a uh, a sign of things to come. He was locked in, and his post fight speech was was pretty good, right? He was the last Canadian on the card, and he had that place rocking. So um, shout to him. I mean, he can be a content. He can the be a railing fell while he was walking out. Yeah, he, he he like I said, he walked past it like nothing happened. He, he was like, yeah, fuck that, I don't care. Um, Roger said, I got to get their shit together, huh? Um, that looked that looked like Veteran Stadium esque. If anyone yeah. out there remembers when the Army Navy game they, they fucking collapsed yep. the rally there. So. Or um at the um the Wiz Khalifa Snoop Dogg concert in oh, Canada. Yeah, Canada. When that uh couple when niche just... uh, locations that we both uh <laughs> been in attendance <laughs> yeah. at. So um go. but yeah, um not not much really, you know, happened. Mike Malak got a couple takedowns, got the sub, got the knockdown, pretty just just dominated it. Uh, from start to finish. So, shout out to Canada for clinching that sixth uh, sixth win of the night. Yeah, I got cooked on these Canadian bets, man. Um, really, I am upset with myself. It it, it it was just a bad decision by me. But, I mean, some of these I still stand by. I mean, maybe not the Eric Anders or the, um, I guess, Miranda Maverick now. But I stand by Ricky <laughs> Lang. I never, I mean, Eamon Zahabi looked like uh, prime Mike Tyson on Saturday night. So, <laughs> uh, Dan Ige, he looked good. Uh, he he kind of took a little bit of damage, though. I mean, he was busted up. The fight Nate Landwehr is no joke, but he had enough. He was more technical, more powerful. He was quicker. Uh, and But Nate Nate was impressive in a loss, though, uh, as well here. Because, I mean, he got sent to the Shadow Realm and woke up immediately. So uh, it's yeah. his cardio and his resilience is 100% there. Yeah, it, it sucked. Ige went to go, you know, finish him on the ground. And then Landwehr, you know, was, like, holding on to his leg. And he couldn't really... Couldn't get the finish, which sucked, but 
Uh, I heard him at the end of the, what, the second and the third? Or maybe the first and the second? I forget. But either way, did what he had to do. But yeah, man, Ige, he gets marked up every fight, it seems. Yeah. Like he's a, he's a, he's, he's an old, an old 31. Uh, definitely been, you know, and been a fair in some share wars. of wars. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so that sucks. And I think that's going to, you know, it's going to catch up to him, man. I mean, Damon Jackson was, was striking with this guy for a little bit, you know, so, um, Definitely something to watch out for in the future, but yeah, he still has that that power. I, I, sometimes his volume is a little lower, it seems like, but he also does, you know, get. I don't want to say gas, but just doesn't have the of, best gas tank though. You are right. You, like you said, yeah. those Hawaiian guys. So, other, aside from Max Holloway, other Max, yeah, yeah, starts to fade. You know, like the, the third round. You know, Nate was starting to do a little bit, do uh, have have a little bit of success, but yeah, good win for. 50k EA did not get 50k, so that's unfortunate. But could have been worthy of it though for fight, fight of the night. It was it was up there. It had some competition. There was some good match, good matchups, good fights on this card. I really yeah. will be honest. When I shit on a card before, it it exceeded my expectations. How about MAB Power Bar? Mark Andre Barriolt getting a unanimous decision over Eric Anders. I thought this was right. What was the uh, the the scorecards? Is it? Two or is it all three? Thirty twenty sevens? I don't think I, there was, was one twenty nine twenty eight. Okay, I think, I think that's uh, fair. I think uh, Eric Anders could have won one of those rounds. Whether it was this probably the second. I think the first he got clipped and knocked down. The second I thought he won, but I don't remember. Right oh, no. now. I know they he lost all, the fight. So they were all thirty twenty seven. It appears. Oh, okay. But, never mind. I'm thinking of a different fight then. So, but I, you know, he did. He did do some good thing. He got a takedown. I thought he was um, worthy of a scorecard. I think that's what my my thought was. That I thought he definitely could have won one of those. Probably the second rounds. round. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it was the second round. The first round he got. Uh, the first round he got struck him, but he did get knocked down. The third round he got out almost doubled up on. Yeah, third so, round. Yeah, one of the first two rounds he could have definitely won. Um, he couldn't get he he tr- he got one takedown, but he tried a lot. And he just wasn't really close at all, pretty much ever. No, um, you know his his decision to not really block punch, well, block him with his face, <laughs> but not you know defend any strikes. Not he just wasn't moving his head at all off the center line. So that was tough to see. But it was just a tough, grizzled middleweight grind him out affair, and really boring for that. So it was like you said, absolute grind fest and. No thanks, but good for win for MAB. I was on the wrong side here. Uh, Eric Anders is going onto the fade list. I just can't trust him to. I don't understand why he was pushing the grappling as much as he was because he doesn't. He. I thought he had the advantage with his speed on the feet and his power. He was throwing some powerful shots. Just kind of gassed out. He really did, and especially in that third round, you could just tell that output had been slowed down tremendously, and he was getting picked apart by. Uh, Power Bar, so shout out to Power Bar, man. What a, what a nickname. Nasruddin Imavov, Chris Curtis, no contest. A, uh, I mean, Chris Curtis really has a rough go at it, man. He Every time out there, there's something something's going on. He's either getting head-butted or he's uh, yelling at fans who think that Gaslam beat him or, you know, he's knocking out he Walker Buckley or he's yelling it? at Hermanson. <laughs> it's, it's, he had a run-in with a Twitter troll earlier last week I saw also. Uh, at, at at the mall or something, he ran into a uh, Twitter troll of his. Um, and he yeah, knew I mean, who he was, it was. Getting... like he rolled up on him and so you yep. know, yeah. he's like, "I know you." Um, but man, he was he was <laughs> taking a weird. <laughs> he was taking a beating, man. Imavov was was doing really well. I know they were saying they didn't really want him to try to wrestle. I was kind of fine with Imavov, uh, you know, deciding to switch it up with the grappling. But man, he just so much bigger, so much bigger. Than Chris Curtis, he looked like a whole weight, you know, not not as much as mass, but just being five inches taller, looked like a whole, you know, weight weight class above him, um, and just you know, so much quicker. That one two was just landing at will. Even when it wasn't landing, it was still making an impact. Chris Curtis ha- did have to get ten stitches uh, on a pretty nasty cut on on the top of his eyelid, uh, right 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 below his eyebrow, possible corneal abrasion. Uh, he wanted to fight. And they didn't give him five minutes, which very confused about. But I guess when you say, I think he said at some point he can't see. And as soon as you say that, uh, they're going to wave the fight off. It was, I didn't hear him say that, but I, I'm guessing that he did say that. I thought he might have said it to the doctor and then Herzog heard it. But I'm, I'm not too sure what happened. I just I wanted them to give him five minutes. But uh, honestly, there was no reason for that to continue. Uh, he, you know, he was very uh, – he was already getting his ass beat with two eyes. So, you know, I – 
honestly, it was a good thing they didn't let that continue. Uh, there's really no reason for him to take more damage um, just just to show how tough he is. You know what I mean? No, I mean, it's that, that cut was nasty. So, really, it's, yeah. that's just an unfortunate part of the, these fights. Kind of like when somebody gets poked in the eye. It just sucks. Like, I, I, I did feel bad for Chris Curtis because it didn't seem like he wanted it to go like this. Our decision bet was looking pretty good, but, uh, what, you know, or at least mine. I think I had, what did I have? Imovov decision plus 180. You had the money line. So we were we were on our way, but it, you know, it shit happens. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Uh, J, JSP, sorry, not JSP. JSJ, uh, not her. Jasmine Jazdavicious absolutely dominates Miranda Maverick uh, on the feet <laughs> and with the hands. Uh, wrong side of this, Ty. It was a uh, one side of the fair for the most part. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the strike totals look pretty close, but uh, I don't know what Miranda Maverick even landed. <clears throat> you know, she was throwing these like left hooks that were like, uh, I don't even like overhand lefts when somebody comes. I don't know. I don't know what it was. It, it didn't look good. It didn't look pretty. It wasn't pretty. Uh, nothing she threw landed much at all. Uh, Jasmine, you know, she does headhunt though. That's for sure. Uh, I think that's going to eventually get her hurt. I think she's a little sloppy. She's a little stiff, but she has gotten a lot better, man. I mean, <clears throat> closing the distance, uh, working on her wrestling and her just, her, her, she had seven and a half minutes of control over Miranda Maverick. Uh, she looked a lot bigger than her, a lot stronger, quicker. Uh, so shout out to her, man. I also, you know, she, I've been saying her name wrong this entire time. I've been saying just due to vicious. It's Jazz the Vicious. So, there yeah. we go for that. Um, referee Jaron Vallel went from uh, judge to referee real quick. Uh, I love when they do that. That's always fun. Um, but yeah, I mean, Miranda Maverick won the first round, and I, I saw a lot of people didn't think she did. But um, if she would have just, you know, had a better third or second round, she could have stole this fight. She <clears throat> she really she really could have, but she just uh, she got outworked. She got out hustled. She got just just beat. You know. Yeah, and yeah, it really just wasn't close. So it's just not much to say other than that. I was on the wrong side, and I am just upset that I was on this side, man. This is uh, all right. Uh, Amen Zahabi. Now, Jasmine, I'm already, I'm already and, looking ahead. And now this Jasmine's is ranked. Is she really? But Natalia, but now Natalia Silva is not, and they just fought. Natalia Silva smoked her, so kind of confused about that. But I guess she got that uh, Canada bump, if you will. Jones the Vicious is ranked. Yeah, I believe she's fifteenth now. Oh no! If I have that correctly, it's it's just funny because she fought Natalia Silva not too uh, not too long ago, and she got smoked. So yeah, it wasn't really none of these rankings for the UFC have ever really made sense. They kind of just flip flop them every week and just give people something to talk about or look at. And the uh, you know now we have a roster watch account who's telling me every time somebody gets cut or somebody's removed from the roster, uh, Eamon Zahabi. Uh, Eamon Mike Tyson Zahabi left hooks and ground ground strikes the Mongolian murderer uh, another wrong side of uh, should have just bet all the Canadians would have cashed out sort of bet and it was just yeah. you were like oh man I mean one minute this fight was over before it really even started and uh, you know Zahabi Zahabi gets, goes to 10 and 2 man gets a yeah, highlight real knockout I didn't I didn't see this one coming but no. um, yeah, what do you got? He caught a kick and just hit him with a clean left hook, and that that was it for Mister Mister Ricci Lang. So, yeah, Kyle Nelson, dominant, pretty pretty dominant win over Blake Builder. Blake Builder just had nothing for him. He was getting hurt. He was getting. Uh, I think he got hit to the body and got hurt at one point. It was uh, really a dominant affair for Kyle Nelson as well. Unanimous decision. Yep, 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 yep. I thought. I thought. Um, I thought it was kind of funny when Blake Builder was like showboating at the yeah. end of the fight. I'm like, I don't know what uh, what you're what you're doing here, buddy, but you're you're not winning. I was in cruise control at short. this point because I already knew the, the, how this night was going to happen uh, after <laughs> a, after the way it started. I mean, Steve Ursig lo looked like a, a, an absolute elite athlete on Saturday night against David Dvorak. Uh, Dvorak, yeah, just, how about that? Dvorak just uh, I really not that. I mean, I guess he's overrated pretty much. I, I want to say that because he just. Yeah. He doesn't really provide you anything on offense, and he's just kind of backtracking the whole time. And he had his moments in this fight, and he is—he has skills, I guess. But he just—it seems like every time he gets out there, he doesn't put them together. And uh, yeah. maybe, maybe, I, maybe I'm discounting the performance that Steve Ursick had. No, Ursick looked good. He got three or four takedowns. Um, he had a was it a Kimura? 
I could be wrong. Lord, I he, had a, he had a guillotine at one point that was pretty yeah. uh, deep in there, honestly. Uh, Jaron Vallel, the, the ref of the next, the ref of the next fight was a judge in this fight, gave all three rounds to Urseg. Uh, <laughs> not sure about that one, but, um, <clears throat> he definitely deserved the decision though. I think he did yeah. win two, two of the rounds. Um, he looked good. Honestly, uh, you know, I don't know how I, I still have an issue with that tall, tall man defense, but, um, I mean, to make your debut against David Dvorak and get a win, that's very impressive. So. Uh, David Dvorak now three L's in a row, staring down the barrel of being added to the UFC roster watch account. I don't think he will, but you know, if he's it's just not going to put it together, yeah, it could happen. So, um, good win for Ursaig making his debut. A lot of people were talking about him for a while, um, and you know, here he is, pretty much now automatically ranked in the flyweight division, and gets to uh, gets to keep climbing. And a real disgusting opening to this uh, main card. Or, Great sorry, fight. This not this main card. This pay per view event. Uh, the prelims, De- Deanna Belbita and Maria Oliveira. Uh, Deanna Belbita, unanimous decision. Easy work, baby. Easy work. Easy That's bet how you get that Thank shit God done. I took that shit off my card, man. I- I That's the only thing I, I only thing I had. So it's funny Deanna Belbita had a broken foot, so she couldn't really throw kicks. Out kicked Maria Oliveira. Maria Oliveira, uh, you know, also has been released. So she uh, she took a risk and it didn't work. So now she can go maybe maybe to jungle fight, maybe combate. Um, maybe Bellator could happen. We got cooked. Let's be honest, man. We we got cooked. Uh, this was a rough night for us, but we will be back next week uh, with the bets. Uh, Charles Oliveira wins performance at night fifty thousand. Mike Malott fifty thousand. Uh, but uh, Anders and Barry Olp being the fight of the night. I don't know if I agree with that, but. It really, it, you can't. I don't really get upset about who's making this yeah. money. It's not my money. And Steve Ursay gets fifty thousand, which good for him. To have definitely you know who doesn't get to make this fight or to take this fight. fifty thousand. Oh. or who doesn't get their win bonus is Nasruddin Imavov. Uh, just unfortunate. Half of his uh, half of his purse that he should have and would have gotten does not get um, distributed. Just the UFC, co- yeah. Just how that UFC contracts work. How those contracts work, baby. Um, also, getting released after this fight. Like I said, Maria Oliveira, you're done. Braxton Smith, he's done. Martin Sano, our boy, easy, easy cash, easy bet to cash when he's fighting. He's gone. So, uh, it's always uh, sad when you see these money makers just leaving the uh, leaving the octagon, man. A couple other ones I forgot about that I didn't see: Takashi Sato, Don Shanus, your man. No. Yeah, Bia Malecki. We've been talking about her for a while. You know, she she got CTE from one knockout loss to Minnie Nunes. She's done. Journey Newsom, Maxim Grishin, Eric Gonzalez, Nick Fiore, Orion Kosuke, just some of the names that have been released within the past week, week uh, or so. I think that all is fair. I didn't hear a name in there where I said, oh, no. You know, it's. <laughs> yeah, the only one I would say of ones that were released lately is Tony Gravely. I was kind of surprised they, they let him go. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. But then Trevin Jones, Omar Morales, so Lear Latifi. Can't be mad at that. Though. They've also added a, an Irish. Uh, an Irish chick. You should. This is probably be your favorite fighter ever, Miss Shauna Bannon. I saw that. Uh, yeah, apparently she's pretty good though. I, I'm I'm seeing some hype. Um, she has a nice. She's a good follow on Instagram. Uh, you know, she trains and works hard, if you will. Um, just adding on to the Irish legacy. Once Con- they're going to release Connor and bring her in, so on, I think that's a good idea. I think that's a good idea. Replace the Irish has been with the future Irish star. No, Ian I'm Gary, all for the it. The future, you mean? You're talking about Ian Gary? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know you're how big. I Ian Gary been, Machado? You had, you had your Irish flag put up, and you were waving it out your window last time Ian Gary got in there. But. <laughs> Fun fact, I was the uh, fan that confronted him in the parking lot. <laughs> That's a crazy video. Some dude just talking. Yeah, shit. I can't believe, you know, telling, telling a professional fighter who's quite literally undefeated that you would uh, that you would beat them the fuck up. That's, that's very bold. Yeah, man, but... The guy was trying to catch a quick W on the streets. So you, you can't. Hey, he got some street cred, I guess. You know. Uh, how about Tiafimo calling it quits? He pulls the upset over Josh Taylor, right? I mean, the, I, yeah. I, reports have told me he looked great. I didn't get to see the fight, but uh, yeah, uh, the, the the scorecards for some for some reason had it seven five, seven five, and like eight four. When I don't, I don't even know if Josh Taylor won more than two rounds. So. Uh, it's funny because Josh Taylor won the first round. He came out, looked good, used his length, uh, was throwing a lot of hooks. But I think Teofimo, after the first round also, Teofimo's dad was like, figure him out, figure him out, figure him the fuck out. And he's like, I am, I am, relax. 
Uh, I don't, did you ever see that ESPN uh, video or uh, interview with him and uh, Mark Regal? And him and his dad are like arguing the whole yes, time. And yeah, you know, I, yeah. oh my, that was a fucking train wreck. And then he starts yelling at Mark Regal, and I'm like, oh my god, this is not, this is not helping anybody who has concerns for Teofimo Lopez's boxing career just because of the outside the ring stuff. And then he retires after putting on one of the best performances of his career. I mean, he was a huge underdog. Honestly, the, the odds kept com- the money kept coming in on Josh Taylor. And I'm surprised, you know, I'm surprised I didn't at least take a chance on Teofimo, given how he looked against Lomachenko before and how Josh Taylor was pretty much coming off a loss against Jack Catterall, where he, you know, Catterall got robbed. But uh, yeah, I mean, he looked so much quick. He's just, he, he's such a unique fighter, Teofimo is. I don't think you, you would ever teach anybody to fight the way he does. I mean, you know, he's just sitting on the outside and he leaps in, goes to the body, goes up top, so quick, so just, you know, he fires from all different angles, throws all these different shots. Both men fell. Uh, slipped multiple times in this fight. Uh, no knockdowns, I believe. Uh, he hurt Josh Taylor to the body, hurt him to the head. Um, he just looked fucking awesome, man. He looked really good. It was kind of tough to watch. There was three things going on at once. Jaime Munguia, Sergei Derevyanchenko. They had like arguably the fight of the year on at the same time. Uh, half of that fight was pretty much over with be, uh, before the Teofimo fight started. But then the UFC was on. So I had all the TVs, all the all the laptops and whatnot working. It was tough, but, um, yeah, I mean, Teofimo looked amazing, and then he was talking about how, uh, yeah, I could I could retire, and I'm like, whoa, whoa, let's slow down that talk. I want to see you fight all the other guys, right? There's so many fun fights to make if Teofimo's on his game. That, that just makes that, uh, that 140 division so much better, that 135, 140, 147 run of, uh, you know, lightweight, super lightweight, and welterweight. But um, then the next morning goes on um, – I don't know if he was on ESPN – he was on some some show, and he announced his retirement. <laughs> At the ripe age of twenty five, he has for for now. Yeah, nobody um, believes called, this. A, called no. it quits. I, I would love to see him be active. So if he's going to unretire, I'd like to see it happen within a year because ring rust is real. But however, with Teofimo Lopez, we can get just inconsistent versions of him pretty much all the time. So I I, I don't know what to make of it at all. But I don't know what to make of anything in his career. I would love for his father to uh, shut up for once, but kind of like um, uh, Ortiz, with, uh, Victor Ortiz's father, or Danny or uh, Danny um, Danny Garcia's father. I'm sorry, that'll never happen. Yeah, so yeah, that's a part of it. Yeah, that's just something we're gonna have to live with. Um, but yeah, good. I mean, just best win of his career, and then uh, you know, switching over to the um, the fight on was it on the zone? With uh, Jaime Munguia and Sergey Derev, yeah, what? Uh, yeah, it was biggest win for Jaime Munguia. Um, and honestly, Sergey Derevyanchenko, just another. You know, I thought he beat Triple G when they fought a couple years ago, but uh, he's just one of those guys that fights everybody close and just just loses a split decision or just loses a unanimous decision. He got knocked down in the twelfth round. I think that's really what did it for him. Um, sadly enough, um, so big fight, Jamie Munguia, Jaime Munguia. He's been uh, this. He was a top prospect at 154. He's always been a weight bully, though, I think his problem was. But now at 168, um, no, he, he he has a Mexican uh, Mexican base behind him. I, I mean, he just gets hit so much and so cleanly. He has one of the best chins in boxing, but you got to figure he fights David Benavidez, Caleb Plant, Canelo. That's, he's going to get fucking clotheslined. Um, but still, just a good night of boxing, um, which is always fun. <clears throat> Not to mention the Floyd Mayweather uh, masterclass that he put on against John Gotti the Third. Can you tell me what is happening in the? In the I mean, listen. For most of you people out there, including myself, I've only seen a clip of the ref. <laughs> I believe it was Kenny Bayless, right? <laughs> Kenny Bayless. Kenny, Kenny Bayless. And this is an exhibition, correct? Right. This isn't a real fight. Yeah. It's John Gotti the Third is an MMA fighter uh, with a five and one record. <laughs> and <laughs> I guess he's stopping the fight. And John yeah, Gotti so- III does not agree with the decision, <laughs> and he decides to uh, keep the fight going, and you know basically jukes out Kenny Bayless and starts throwing <laughs> hammers on the other side of the ring, and then all these people jump in, and it is absolute chaos in this clip. Yeah, just a bunch of, and then there was. <laughs> did you see the video of the? Um, uh, I, I think it was a, a TMT, the Money Team member. Uh, or, f- or friend of a friend, uh, got into a fight with a Team Gotti representative um, by the uh, kind of by the entrance, it looked like. Great. <laughs> uh, 
Mr. Mr. The, the money team member did not did not fare well. There was like thirty John Gotti family members, main <laughs> men, uh, just a lot. Of, I mean, when you have Floyd Mayweather, also uh, the sister of of John Gotti III taking to Twitter to say some pretty um, pretty racist pretty racist things about Mayweather about just everything. I'm trying to find them now. Um. I mean, I think when this fight got announced, everyone's like Floyd Mayweather and a grandson of a mobster. A son of a mobster, right? Wasn't his father in the mob? I'm, I'm sure, not really I'm sure. sure. Yeah, I, I, haven't, <laughs> I haven't kept up with all this nonsense for the most part. I can't believe Nicolette Gotti. She sends a bone chilling threat to Floyd Mayweather's daughter. <laughs> oh, great. Yaya Mayweather, who, by the way, is uh, in, a, in a relationship with NBA Youngboy. There's a lot going there are on. People listening to this who are like, "What in the <laughs> fuck are you guys talking about?" Um, his sister said, "Your daughter was ran through by an animal with Jesus twelve different baby Christ. mamas. Your your little circus animal. I mean, this is just this is wild. Your you're all a pack of zoo animals. Oh, I swear Jesus. on my kids, I'm coming for your daughter. It may be what? two years, three years from now, but I'm coming." C U N T. See you next Tuesday. She put that on Instagram, on her Instagram story, uh, calling his daughter a see you next Tuesday. And then John Gotti the third also said that they now, <laughs> they now, um, this will never be over. So they're going to have a rivalry until until somebody goes to the grave. I'm kind of concerned. I believe they brought McGregor into this, who has said that he stands with the Gotti's. <laughs> so, no way. Yeah. Get out of here. <laughs> Look that up, dude. I'm telling you, this- the war is on. Conor Conor McGregor backs John Gotti the third. I, I, you know, I can't. I can't say I'd be mad if you're going to choose a side. I mean, I don't think Conor McGregor has to choose a side in this. No, he doesn't. But hey, listen, if some, he probably has no idea what's even going on. They probably he probably just saw this happening and he saw Floyd Mayweather in it, and he's like, "Yeah, fuck Floyd." I'm against it. No yeah. matter what, he's against Floyd. I back the Gotti's. Yeah, I think I might too. Uh, if, he, if if any member of the John Gotti crime family is calling me an enemy for life, I'm pretty scared. <laughs> I'm pretty terrified. So, I mean, you know, Floyd Mayweather could also just, you know, that guy shits out billion dollars like it's nothing. So, you know, he could also just, you know, pay off whoever. We, we could have a nice civil war here. We, you know what? No, I, let's let's leave it in the it ring, boys. All right, why don't we just run it back? What was the fight even stopped for? Well, the whole fight they kept they kept holding each other. Uh-huh. They both kept holding, and Kenny Bayless told them to stop, and they wouldn't stop. So he kept telling he kept telling them to stop, and they just wouldn't. It was pretty much uh, you know a backyard fight, and Kenny Bayless somehow had to try to be the referee of it, uh, and they didn't stop. So he disqualified he disqualified both of them. Uh, which I've, I, you know, have not really seen ever, but it was also an exhibition match. So I'm a bit confused. But also, did you see the right hand that Floyd Mayweather, Mayweather landed on Mr. Gotti III uh, when he came at him once no, the fight was over? <laughs> oh, man, he, he hit him with a right hand, and he went from one corner to the other corner. He backed up quick. <laughs> um, also, there was just so many people involved. It was really hard oh, to see. All these people jumped in there, man. See what's going on, uh, but Floyd actually got a, a nice little bruise, a nice shiner. So somebody hit him. Uh, I'm sure a bunch of people hit him. Uh, Nicolette Gotti sending threats to his daughter, who's Maybe with NBA Young Boy, to stop doing this stuff. Like I have begged him you to know, he's, stop he's, doing these freak show events. But I mean, he's still getting paid, so I can't be mad at the man. Yeah, I mean, who's constantly making this kind of money, which I don't. Again, let yeah. me specify: I don't know who's watching these. I don't know who's paying for these to, to watch these. I have not once. I can't ma- remember the last time since he fought that Japanese fellow uh, on uh, New-, New Year's uh, Eve. Tenshin Nakusawa. Uh, Tenshin, since he did that, yeah. I haven't watched this man beat. He's beat the shit out of everyone because he's just fighting random people now. They're like, I want to fight Floyd Mayweather. And he's like, okay. Like, <laughs> Apparently, um, let's see. This seems to be off. It's, like you said, though, it, <laughs> you know, he's going to Asia, to Asian countries and fighting Asian fighters in like a basement. Of like some building, and I'm like, that seems, you know, what if you do the wrong thing or piss off the wrong person? You might not leave that area. You know, you're going to go to the Middle East and fight somebody. You better watch. Like Abu Dhabi is going to fight on a helicopter pad. On a heli, yeah, on a helipad. He was going to, but Mr. Bob uh, Bob Johnson, whatever that fellow's name was, had to pull out. 
or whatever. And well, then, you know, he's fighting the, the sheik, mob members. Rest in peace of the Sheik, I think. Yeah, yeah he, he, he peaced out. No, not, not the Iron Sheik, whoever the... No, the Iron Sheik is dead. Yeah, well, he is dead. Rest in peace of the Iron Sheik, but... Uh, oh, you're talking about the other... Oh, that Sheik. Yeah. Okay, I know I know Sheik now. Yeah, he died right before... The, yeah, he ruined the fight, if you will. He did, yeah. Some people um, have said that. <laughs> also, apparently, this... I, I don't think he was receiving this much money for the Scotty fight, yeah? Can't imagine. That's what I'm wondering. The, every time I hear about these payoffs, I'm like, who is who is sponsoring 20, these events? Twenty five million for Connor, and I think Mr. Gotti twenty million, which I find very hard to believe. But you know, he's probably making much less off these fights just because nobody's buying the pay per views. Like I know there's no way people are paying. Like what was this on? It was on the Zeus Network. See, like what are we doing for it? <laughs> You used to be the fucking box office main attraction, and now you're fighting John Gotti the Third in some hole in the wall somewhere, and you're and these brawls are breaking out between you and the Italian mob. Hey, what do we? Come on, Floyd. Yeah, yeah. Um, they they fought in Florida. I you know, color me surprised that this happened in Florida. Um, yeah, poor uh, poor Kenny Bayless. I mean, well, he probably um, caught some. Some bows. I'm sure they were going after him too. Uh, people, uh, <laughs> that was just, it's just an insane. The announcers going, whoa, 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 whoa! Doesn't even know what to do. Like, oh, he's still throwing. <laughs> no, nothing will beat. Uh, come on, man. He's, he's at the ring. But uh, you know, I, I, you, I think I'm legally obligated to bring that up once a pod. <laughs> I think the soundboard is on the way. It has. The soundboard to. is on the way. The Florida um, Live Arena is where this went down, and uh, yeah, and beautiful. Where is this? Sunrise, Sunrise. Florida, like you said? Yeah. How many, um, hold? How many we got in here? Uh, wow. As many mob members as you can fit. 20,000. This is a legit arena. Oh, this is where the Panthers play? <laughs> I think so, yeah. Yeah, this is where the Panthers play. They just besmirched yeah. that arena in the middle of the Stanley Cup final. <laughs> I mean, well, you know, they're probably going to get smoked by the by the Golden uh, Knights. Your, so. your Vegas Knights are getting it back at it tonight. So Yeah, unfortunately. But, um, yeah, all of that. All of that happened. All the fighters got there. Listen, there was a lot that happened. Uh, it might have been like a not a huge headline weekend, but I mean, there's there was a lot. As he said, he's, he will fight Alex Pereira again if Alex Pereira wins the two hundred five belt. Would never give him the shot um, if I was Alex Pereira. Yeah, I would tell you, tell him to go fuck your, or tell him to move up the one two hundred five. Imagine two hundred five. Is he an Alex? That would no, be- that's what I'm saying. He wants him to win the belt at two hundred five, and then he'll fight him at two hundred five for the belt. I would not do it. Yes. Yeah, I would say no. I'd tell him to get him and fight chocolate. Yeah, Get Chuck Liddell in there. Chuck. Um, Jesse Ronson, former UFC fighter, you said he was going to make a run at the belt. He says doctors don't check feet when going through medical checks before a fight. That explains Diana Belbita just walking in there with a smashed foot. Um, so it was not a chick. <laughs> Conor McGregor also. Me foot was um, a balloon. <laughs> um, Jimmy Mano Jr. What? He says he wants to get in the ring with Hassan, Hasim Rahman Jr. Oh, Misfits Boxing. That fight will be coming up shortly. Uh, stay tuned for the date of that. <laughs> um, GDR says she's coming back after pregnancy. You know how that auto pregnancy fade fade works. So we'll have to see what she does. Um, Chris Weidman. This was good. This is actually yeah, bad. Man. He's getting back in there. He says he's going to throw the hardest leg kick in his life when he returns. Um I don't know about that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm hoping it goes well. He's fighting Brad Tavares, correct? Yeah. And Brad Tavares, like you know, we've talked about him before, he you know, he couldn't finish his dinner. But Jesus Christ. <laughs> I think Come I think on, if man. Chris Come on. <laughs> I think if Chris Wyman comes in there after like three years off <laughs> and having his leg explode into five million tiny little pieces and get put back together. Now, if he wants to throw a light kick, uh, you know, go, go, do what you want, Chris. Do what you want. I think I might have to bet Brad Tavares in that fight. Um, but, geez. Yeah, could use some nice odds on that. I, I, I don't know. It's What's that, 292? Is that not till the end of July? Yeah. yeah that's when that's, that card's going to be awesome. I, can, I cannot wait to see that. But Or is that 291, the one that's the end of July? Or 291 is Volk, right? Or no, that's 290. Maybe Actually, I don't maybe know what I'm right. talking about. Maybe, I don't know. 292 is in, uh, would be September then, yeah? I guess. Or August, I'm sorry. <laughs> Jeez. I have no I'm, having, I'm having a, a nice meltdown here. No, yeah, it is 292 
that will be in Boston in August 19th, on August 19th. Um, Aljo, Sean O'Malley, if that even happens, because Aljo's like, wait a minute, I, di- I didn't consent to this. I didn't even sign the contract. Uh, Wei Lee and Amanda Lemos, Weidman. So, so we're going to have Weidman and Garbrandt on the same card. Wow. That's two, uh, two nice fades on one night, if you will. Let's cash it in, ladies and gentlemen. We have a card this upcoming weekend, Vittori and Jared Cannonier. Uh, 14 fights to talk about, so hopefully some of these stay uh, available for this. Uh, Emmett and Taporia was supposed to be on this card, but they rescheduled that to another time, I believe. So Next week. Is that what, is that what it is? That card's pretty good, too, honestly. I mean, Cedric Dumas is on the is on the main card, and that's just, you know, that's that's uh, something. But Amanda Hebos, Macy Barber, Brendan Allen, Bruno Silva, Neil Magny, Phil Rowe. Austin Lane, former NFL legend, is getting in there. Randy Brown is buried on the prelims. How about yeah. that? It's a, it's I guess that'll happen. Card. Yeah, anything but close. Trevor, Trevor Peaks Peach. getting back in there, baby. You know how we feel about him. Uh, Tatsuro Tyra, I think this is where the hype train ends. Clayton Rodriguez is going to get it done. He probably won't, but I think he will. That's a nice matchup. This is going to be a really good card. Wow. Jack Jenkins, our boy against Jamal Emmers. That's going to be a good fight, too. Honestly, this card is good. Usually when they go to another city, which... Listen, I'm kind of tired of the Apex, right? Like, if you would have gotten rid of this um, this card that's coming up this weekend and maybe the one that's coming up on July 1st with Sean Strickland and uh, it looks like Yana Santos and Macy Chasson going to be the co-main, which is just, you know. Kevin Lee? Kevin Lee's getting back in there? The Kevin Have Lee? my eyes deceived me? He's ah. fighting Renat Fokratinov, oh, it boy. appears. Yeah. Um, they fucking hate But him. if you were to... <laughs> if you were to just get rid of some of these fight night cards and somehow allocate the, those fights to other cards and maybe, maybe I don't know, not sign as many goddamn, you know, uh, fighters, you'd have, you'd have much better product. Uh, I just don't, I don't love the apex, man. You know, it was cool at first, but now I'm just over it, I'm over there being there, you know, 24 seven. But, um, you know, this is where, this is where we're at. It's where we're at, and uh, yeah, like you said, I, I think the less I wish they could do less events and go on the road more, because then they're forced to actually put on a good show and it, make it worth their while to actually sell tickets. That's why those and those ABC cards they really do show out for for some reason. I, I mean, I get they want to make it worth uh, ABC and ESPN's while, but I feel like, like you said, like they have an Apex uh, ESPN Plus event, like but like this past weekend, you're not seeing shit, or not this past weekend, the weekend before. You're not getting anything good, man. So, yeah. Also, uh, I think this card this weekend starts at seven, right? Yeah. Uh, that's a that is a long. So, if the card itself starts at seven, there's 14 fights. My math that I failed as a sophomore in high school tells me that the the card might go on until like 1 a.m. That oh, is just easily. yeah. I don't I don't know what to. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, maybe I uh, am I not. Yeah, I'm not doing anything that night, so uh, I'll be watching. I'll be watching. So that's going to be fun. 1 a.m. Catch me watching a, uh, Jared Kennedy. I think Jared Kennedy loses this one fairly easily. What do you think? I think, I mean, Vittori is just that, that guy who you really can't get rid of. He continually dominates any of these guys that you put in front of him. I think what Kennedy's probably only path to victory would be cracking Vittori and getting him out of there, but I don't know if he really has that in his, in his game. Vittori it has like a. Crazy Lock chin. Head. Yeah, his head's made of Italian Italian bagel Italian bagels Jesus. that have been hardened for five hundred years. So but we have he did get cracked in his last fight, correct? Against Mr. Um Mr. Vlismus. I thought he got cracked at one point, but that was pretty much it. <laughs> we're starting to see we're starting to see his durability slowly wear down, but I mean he fights such a meatball style that, you know, it's it's just not conducive for a long career. Um, I mean, he's getting wins, right? Middleweight is not a great division, but I just don't see the uh, the long-term potential. Also, I don't see the point in making him a, 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 a headliner for a card. But, because he's a boring uh, fight. I mean, seven decisions, two subs so uh, in, yeah. in your whole UFC career. So, I, I, l- listen, uh, I'm not that excited about the main event necessarily. I probably... As it sits now, might bet Cannoneer just because I think the that number would probably be good. I don't know if it's a good bet. I wish I could do like a half unit or something like that, but yeah, we don't do half measures here on the Shoulder Strikes MMA podcast. It's a, it's a very close, minus one ten, my, minus one ten. So we will have a a whole discussion on this, ladies and gentlemen, on Friday afternoon. We will release another pod 
for all of your listening pleasure. This has been the Shoulder Strikes MMA podcast. Hi. Tell, tell the listeners how thankful you are for them. Very, very thankful for you guys listening to us talk about breakdown, the uh, Gotti family uh, war that they have going on with the Mayweather family. Uh, very excited to dive into that and see what you know, what happens next, right? There has to be something that happens soon. Oh, we'll you be know, locked the Gotti in. family, us- they usually act quick. So um, <laughs> I don't know, uh, you know, who knows? But thank you all for sticking with us, bearing with us. Um, I don't think we have any boxing coming up this weekend, but no, actually, I, I believe we do. I don't. I don't think it's anything big, though. If I recall, if I, I remember think, correctly. Listen, man, this I will be think, the seventeenth. Yeah. We, what do you think? I, I think the money team should beef security up. I think they need to. They need to get so it. Too. They need to beef security up. But they don't know what kind of war they just started with the Gotti family because they apparently I, are at war, enemy for life, and they have Conor McGregor on their side. So. What what yeah. what's next? <laughs> Seriously, what is next? Is Kenny Bayless? What side is Kenny Bayless going to join? That's what I'm wondering. Um, if I was Floyd, yeah, Floyd has always been walking around with these big security guys that are like six nine, three hundred and seventy five pounds of granite steel, right? Just monster humans. But what happens if somebody brings a twelve gauge shotgun up to up to Mister uh, Security Member? I think he's going to shoot them, and I don't think those muscles are going to stop anything. I think he needs to hire top flight security. I think he needs. Have you seen Sean O'Malley shoot shoot a shoot a gun and uh, <laughs> and do a hip thrust with it? I know you saw that video, right? <laughs> I think Floyd needs to hire Sean O'Malley. I think Sean O'Malley can do some some work with the gun, if you will. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you have to go watch Sean O'Malley shoot a uh, an assault rifle in an empty field and also do some nice hip thrust at the same time. Um, that's the guy that can end this war. I'm just, but he might take the Gotti side. So. Tune in. I guess we're gonna have to start polling people and asking them whose side they're on on this war because it, it could be this could be the start of a World War Three, where you just yeah people, people worry have about to Russia be, and China. I'm worried about John Gotti the Third. You don't want to be on the wrong side of history, man. These guys, these guys could start a nice, you know. All right, enough. I can't do this anymore. Uh, Shoulder strikes MMA podcast. We'll be back next week, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you as always for listening. Peace. You are now listening to the Hot Take Hot Box.